Dun, 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 dun. <clears throat> can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you, can you the, see me now? Yeah, I can see you. Can you hear the music I'm playing? No. Okay. So, um, as I said, this is just a normal podcast. We're just going to have fun with it. Uh, it doesn't have to go anywhere, but if it does, it does, you know? So, um, let me introduce you to chat. Chat, this is my sister, uh, Corinthia, and... Um, do you have like any socials or anything you want to plug in? No, no, no not even your TikTok. No. If you can find me, that's cool, but no. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna move the camera here. Uh, actually, can I move these? That's my question. No. Well, that's fun. Oh, actually, hold on, I gotta pop out Blair. Bam! Look at that. I'll put your pretty face here. Uh. So you like mythological things. I like mythological things and all that. Uh, <laughs> is there like a favorite myth that you have? A favorite myth? You gave me literally no heads up on what we were talking about. <laughs> Sorry. Do you favorite get... myth? Favorite myth, like Greek, uh, Norse, anything like that? Oh, man. <laughs> um, 
Favorite myth. You're I'm... terrible at this. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> How am I terrible at this? I'm just you give me you no questions. warning. <laughs> no information on what we're doing. And I'm supposed to just entertain you? <laughs> no. Um, <sighs> fine. Um... You, you said, go first. What's uh, your favorite myth? My favorite myth. Okay. So I have several. Oh my gosh. But oh, I, it's hard, huh? Yeah. But I think yeah. my all-time favorite is the one mom came up with for us. And that is the Sausage Queen. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. That is... You have to tell it now. Okay, so... Because I know it, right? <laughs> yeah. So, chat, get this. Uh, anytime me and my sister were, like, in trouble or anything like that, my mom would point to, like, we always got in trouble on long trips or, like, short trips. But for some reason, on every road we were on, there was an abandoned house out there. <laughs> and my mom or my dad would point at it and be like, you see that? It's a sausage queen's house. She turn you into sausage. And we believed it. Okay, but who is the sausage queen? Because there's a whole song that there goes is. along with this um, so the reason we believed in a sausage queen was it, because of a song that she sang johnny rebeck where johnny rebeck made a machine that turns animals into sausage which shocker that's how sausage is made but one night his wife like accidentally pushes him into the machine while sleepwalking mm. and then According to the myth our parents came up with, because this is a real song that exists, mm -hmm. that she, like, went mad and now turns bad children into sausage. Yeah. And apparently can teleport. Yeah. To any abandoned house that happens to be on the road. Well, not just any abandoned <laughs> house. Anywhere. Because no. we would be in the grocery store and they would say... You know, if you don't behave, the sausage queen is behind that door. And it's always like, you know, the swinging doors in the deli counter area, which makes sense that she'd be there because that's where the sausage is. But yeah, yeah. we were not going to misbehave in public for very long. Oh, heck no. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, that's one of my favorite myths. <laughs> well, do you know the one of it's Artemis, Orion and Apollo? No, I haven't heard this one. So Artemis is a maiden huntress. What that means is that Artemis is a virginal goddess. So she doesn't, in our context, virgin means something different. But in the Greco-Roman context, it just meant unmarried. Mm. Uh, because they had a concept called susmana. Susmana means with uh, within the hand. So a woman who is married... Um, becomes susmana, so in the hand of her husband, after a year of cohabitation. So higher-powered women would not live with their husbands for a full year mm -hmm. um, right after they're married so that they would remain autonomous and not be completely controlled by their husbands because what that essentially meant is that they became the property of their husband. But... Um, Women who were not married were referred to as melita, or maidens, which just meant unmarried. It didn't mean virgins. It didn't mean Anything that they weren't like having that. sex with anybody. Okay. Um, it just meant unmarried. So Artemis is an unmarried goddess, um, a virgin huntress. And she's also a protector of women and animals. And Apollo is her twin brother. He's a god of poetry. He's a god of the sun. Um, he's also, yeah, he's, they're both archers. Their mother is Leto, the goddess of the moon. Their father is Zeus because everyone's dad is Zeus. But, um, remember guys, make a tree, so, not a bush. <laughs> mm, Zeus loved to branch out. And I mean that as a pun, but, um, so Artemis became friends with Orion, who is a mortal mm -hmm. hunter. Um, Orion came upon Artemis when she was bathing in this river and when she saw him initially she was going to kill him and then she realized that he was not approaching her with ill intention he wasn't there to you know sexually assault her or to spy on her or anything and so instead they became friends and they spent a whole day hunting and bonding and it was great 
And then that night, Mm -hmm. when they're sitting around the fire, Apollo approaches them because, you know, it's no longer daytime. Apollo's not busy. The sun is down. He can hang out with his sister. So he shows up and he's like, who the hell is this guy? And Artemis is like, don't worry, bro. He's totally chill. He's like... I think he's in a dude, so it's not a big deal. And Apollo's like, oh, okay, cool. My sister, whose maidenhood I am trying to protect, uh, is safe. So they hang out. They have a great time. Artemis goes to sleep. Orion and Apollo are staying up late, sitting around the campfire. One thing leads to another, and they have sex. Okay? So now Orion and Apollo have, have now had a relationship. Mm-hmm. They wake up in the morning and Orion is like, this is awesome. I am into men and you, Apollo, the god, are also into men. And Apollo says, I don't know what you're talking about. I only like ladies. And then Orion is like, N- but I'm a man and we just we just had sex. And mm-hmm. Apollo is like, I don't know what you're talking about. So then eventually what happens is... Apollo accuses Orion of trying to rape Artemis Mm -hmm. and therefore feels like he is justified in killing him. And so he sends a giant scorpion after Orion and Orion dies fighting this scorpion to prove his innocence. And at the last second, uh, Artemis casts him into the sky and he becomes the constellation Orion and Orion's belt, which is why Orion's belt, the Orion constellation, is chased by the Scorpio constellation because the Scorpion and Orion are stuck in eternal battle in the stars because Artemis saw that as the only way to save him. Nice. And all of that because of gay panic. (laughs) So, yeah. I I told that myth in a classical mythology course in college because I was doing a presentation on Artemis and I said that Apollo literally hit it and quit it like literally and then hit it again but like with a fist and my Mm -hmm. professor did not laugh but she does tell that story about me telling that story to her students now it was a one night man (sighs) He was like, I was so drunk, I thought you were a girl. It's like, the anatomy is very different. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Oh You're goodness. gay. That it's is... okay, you can be bisexual. <laughs> Just own up to it. That is pretty funny. Um, I do like that myth. Uh, it's new. I'm going to keep that one in my memory. Uh, chat, while uh, we're talking, you can ask us questions like, uh, what it's like being a brother and sister, uh, with the brother looking way older than the sister. Uh, I'm. <laughs> do you look way older than me? Is that a thing? It's the beard. It's gotta be right. Yeah. So um. Anywho, um, not a lot of people know this about my sister, mm-hmm. but she is a published author. I am. In the very technical sense, I am published. Yeah? How how excited were you when you found out you were getting published? Um, it felt weird. So it's a short story in a horror anthology. And um, it's based on a recurring nightmare I had mm-hmm. from the age of, like, 6 to 13. Okay. And so I submitted it not thinking I was going to get picked, and then I was. And so I had kind of mixed feelings, but... It's cool. I mean, it's out there, and it's it's weird to think that there are people I will never know reading something I wrote, yeah, and like having an opinion on it. It's such a bizarre feeling. Uh, is there a place we can read it? Yes, if you go on Amazon and you look up uh, my name, mm-hmm. then you can find my author page and. Uh, will connect you to that book and there's a whole series of horror anthologies the one that i'm published in is set in the u.s Uh um, but they have very specific ones in different areas that is pretty cool and i do think that the publishing company that published me is still accepting uh new authors so if you want to 
write something and try to get published and you go to their website, um, they have submission information. There we go. Nice. So, unfortunately, I am not seeing it. Is it. It's in the book section, right? Should be. Okay. I don't know. I'll be honest. I've never looked for myself on Amazon. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and look for you real quick. Uh, Let me see. Do you have any questions for me? Like, what it's like being a streamer or anything like that? Do I have questions for you? Yeah. Why do you look so old? <laughs> so that is a genetic code. <laughs> no, uh, it's a genetic uh, thing, you know. The men in our family happen to look older than they are, and the women in our family happen to look younger. You look I don't younger. know if that's entirely true for the women, but yes, okay. we do look younger. Let me see. Uh-huh. I wonder if it's not available on Amazon anymore. Did you use a pseudonym? No. Or a nom de plume? Yes, no. that's right, Chad. I have t intelligence, too. I may look stupid when I'm playing video games, but I have intelligence. <laughs> so, um... Growing up, did you ever think um, you would be where you are right now? Uh, no, I didn't think I would live past the age of 11. <laughs> and then I didn't think I'd live past the age of 13 for a completely different reason. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. This is not what I expected of my life. Because I thought I was going to be a priest. And, um, in 2020, I just realized that I couldn't do that. I don't I can't support Christianity because it's been such a vessel of pain and exploitation and as a person who's experienced firsthand the the negative sides of the church I couldn't commit my life to bringing people into it or keeping them there and the more I worked at like decolonizing my education to try and broaden my understanding of non-white voices and non-white perspectives and non-western perspectives mm -hmm. the more i decolonized and deconstructed my faith and realized that a lot of the things religion told me i needed or that i was and should be were fabricated by religion to keep me in religion and weren't something that i needed to hold on to anymore and um yeah, I started 2020 with myself being in process to be a priest and ended 2020 an atheist. And uh, so, no, I don't think I could have ever imagined I'd be here, but I'm a lot happier than I ever thought I could be. And I'm a lot freer and more confident. And I've never felt like I turned 30 last year and I've never felt younger, like I feel like I have so much more time to do everything I've ever wanted to do. Like, there's no time limit anymore because in a lot of ways, religion told me I had to, like, hit certain metrics before it was too late, you know? But now there's no too late um, until it's the end, right? Um, right? And, like, the hardest thing about leaving was that it was so easy. So yeah, no, I, I did not imagine being where I am or who I am now at any point in my life, literally up until last year. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of the same with me. Uh, you know, when you're, you're a kid, you're thinking, you know, oh, I want to be a millionaire. I want to be a billionaire and all that. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest, the grind to get there is insane. And it's not for normal people. I mean, look at me. I'm doing a podcast. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, and I stream on the site. I mean, it. 
I never would have put myself at this, you know, like where I am. I know I'm pretty smart for my age. I'm also pretty stupid for my age as well. Like, there's, here's the thing, you know. I mean, if whoever's watching, um, and you know this, you're a kid. You think you know everything. You think your parents know everything, and you wake up one day and you're like, man, we don't know shit. <laughs> And it's true, because <laughs> we don't know. I mean, unfortunately, but no, I I definitely wouldn't have seen myself here. I mean, I definitely uh, didn't see myself doing a podcast uh, with my sister, which is great. I mean, I don't know if she wants to be a co-host kind of thing and we get some other <laughs> guests on. That would be cool, in my opinion. But uh, you got to give me a little more to work with before I sign on, then, if I'm going to do that. Oh, no problem. A little more. Just a li- just give me a, a header. You know, what are we going to talk about? Okay, well, you know, um, it's my policy. Uh, probably because of the way I've, I was trained in customer service and all that crap. Uh, to just jump headlong into it and figure it out as I go. I mean, that's been my policy, and it's worked out for me so far. Well, personally... I know you like planning. Five minutes. Five minutes of ahead of you know, just a little <laughs> upfront. Listen, because when you... I asked you what we were going to talk about, you said, "Oh, nothing. I don't know." And then said, "You like the first thing you say is let's talk about mythology," and I'm like, "Jesus, Henry Christ!" You I don't. Know, <laughs> we'll just call it the spontaneous, you know, podcast, as it were. You know, I mean, um, <laughs> what just... was that? It was chat roulette. Is that what it was called? Uh. Yeah, it's a really bad site now. I wouldn't go there. I mean, all of the internet is bad, so I don't doubt that. Yeah. Uh, None so, of it's... so, um, I don't know if, like, my favorite thing, uh, is knowing that mom got us into history, which allowed us to find our niches in history. Like, yours is Greek and uh, Egyptian and Norse and all that, and those are your favorite mythologies i also love those mythologies myself i mean they're beautiful mythologies but have you ever read an urban legend which later becomes a myth an urban legend i mean yes. i've seen all of the terrible movies, movies. yeah called urban legend no, um i'm going to go ahead and let you answer that question after I'm done selecting my screen here. <laughs> and then, uh, go ahead. I mean, I don't know if I could even tell you what the urban legend was, but we all know the, like, you know, the story about the bridge that someone lives under and it's scary, or the guy at night who goes and wiggles doorknobs to try to get in people's houses, or, um, you know, you don't want to do X, Y, Z because this will happen. Like, I think most of those are just urban legends that By themselves, yeah. Yeah, may not even have, an, like, a real origin, but were maybe kind of like other myths, just cautionary tales because mm-hmm. parents or whoever didn't want their kids to do dumb things. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, why should I lock the door? Well, someone, uh, they walk around at night and try to come in. It's like, just lock the fucking door. That's why. Because <laughs> that's why. So, uh, let me know if this works. I am going to share my screen. And I'm going to read off some of these urban legends with you. Great. All right, so here we go. Come Are on. you sharing your screen? I'm trying to. I don't know where it's going with this. <laughs> I'm hitting a button, you ding ding. Hold on. Uh, Discord is so weird. Like, it'll work, but then it don't work. I don't know. This screen. Oh, is it sharing just the screen I'm on? That's too- Can you see anything? Or no? Just you. Just your ugly mug. It says waiting for server. I'm not dying. No, oh, okay. For some reason, like turning on um my thing. Anyway, I'll 
how am I gonna do this? Uh, I guess I'll read an urban legend. <laughs> Should I Google some? Is that what you want me to do? Sure, Google some. I mean, it's not working. I'm trying to. <laughs> well, it reminds me of, like, the um, Japanese bathroom games that are, like, based on urban legends. Have you heard of these? No, I haven't, actually. Or, like, the elevator games. So it's, it's this urban legend. Mm -hmm. There are, like, different ones in Japan, especially, but uh, the legend is, that, like, you go into the bathroom at night, um, and it's usually, like, school or, like, a communal bathroom, and uh, you make sure you're alone in there, and then you go into the last stall, and then you, like, repeat this mantra, and sometimes it has, like, actions, like, you have to flush the toilet, or you have to go in and out of the stall, or you have to turn on all the water, like, whatever it is, right. but then if you do this... Um, it, like, summons a ghost, and then that ghost will, like, kill you if you don't complete an action. But And then if you do complete the action, you get, like, a wish, or, like, it, it gives you something in return. And it's the same for, like, the elevator game, where you, like, push a bunch of different buttons, and it's supposed to send you to a floor that doesn't exist, except if you do the combination correctly. That's crazy. Yeah, it reminds me of that, like, um, kind of like uh, The Grudge, right? <laughs> yeah, don't watch the video or you'll die. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it's chain mail. That's what it is. Yeah. It's like the Facebook post of, like, like to pray, comment to save a life, like, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Or uh, how about I give you an urban legend and you try to guess what state it's from, just based off the urban legend. Okay, okay. Okay. So the generally accepted story of Hell's Gate Bridge starts in the 1950s. A young couple driving over the bridge somehow drove their car off the bridge one night, and they both drowned. There are two legends associated with Hell's Gate Bridge. One, that if you drive your car out of the middle of the bridge and turn off the lights, the couple will magically appear in your car and leave a wet spot on the seat. That's gross. Um, that is disgusting. The other. <laughs> I don't like that. Or no. Mm -mm. The other, which is how the bridge got its name, is the belief that if you drive over the bridge and look over your shoulder halfway through, the scenery behind you turns into a portal to hell engulfed in flame. You know that sounds like Ohio. Ooh, is I it Ohio? It is Alabama. Alabama. I was gonna guess either Ohio or Kansas, so I was gonna be wrong. I mean, but it, it definitely sounded like middle of the country, right? Yeah. Yeah. Those people love Satan. And by that I mean they really, really fear him. Yeah. So this one is just a freebie because it has the name in the legend itself. Okay. So um, everyone knows the story of the Bermuda Triangle, but you might not uh -huh. know about the Alaskan Triangle. On average, five out of every 1,000 people go missing in Alaska. According to the LA Times, so even if there's nothing supernatural going on, it's easy to get lost in the Alaskan wilderness. The Tinglit, I can't pronounce their tribe name, I do apologize, who live in the Juneau, Juneau. Juneau, have their own explanation for the higher number of missing people. Evil spirits called the Kushtaka. Good, the, the <laughs> spelled K. I love the prep work for this. <laughs> Kushtaka. I mean, I love it too. The Kushtaka are shaped, uh, shifters, half human, half otter, who lure, sorry, lure women and children to the water with fake cries in order to steal their human spirits and drown them. So sirens, basically. But otters. Honestly, I like the otter better than the fish ones. Yeah. Ooh. It reminds me of um, like selkies. Oh yeah. Because they're they're like seals. Yeah. So they would also be kind of like otters, right? Kind of. Except selkies don't necessarily lure you to your death. I, mean, I guess if you really piss one off, but... Yeah, I was gonna say, like, if you piss one of them off, they'll probably drag you. 
Alright, so the story of the Slaughterhouse Canyon. Not pictured. Slaughterhouse Canyon. Mm -hmm. Also called the Less Frightening Luana's Canyon. Takes place during the Gold Rush. During the 1800s, there was a family who lived down in the canyon. They were very poor, so the father would venture out into the canyon for food for his family. As you might have guessed, one day the father did not return, so his family slowly starved and descended into madness. The mother, unable to bear listening to her children cries anymore, put on her wedding dress, murdered her children, and then threw them into, the, into a nearby river. The next day, she succumbed to starvation herself. The legend states that if you go down to Slaughterhouse Canyon at night, even now, you will hear the loud, anguished cries of the mother who lost her mind. Does it say her wedding dress is white? Mm, no, it just says she put on her wedding dress. Interesting. And I believe the white thing only started late. After Victoria. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Most people didn't have special dresses for their wedding. It was just their best clothes. So I call party foul on this story. There's no way. I'll give you a hint. Okay. Is it Arizona? It is. <laughs> yeah. I, was gonna I say... knew it was going to be Arizona because of the gold rush in a canyon. Yeah. Because that's where uh, the Flying Dutchman stuff is. Yes, and I do love the legend, but it's pretty stupid too. I just saw four cop cars drive by my house. Holy crap. Uh, I don't know what's going on, but I didn't do it, so I don't have to worry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this one, I can't really divulge much, so I'll pause on the certain name, and I don't want to give that up, okay? Okay. The Boggy Creek Monster of Thauk is <clears throat> version of can you spell the last word f-o-u-k-e okay yeah so Aki. true yeah he's commonly accepted to be around seven or eight feet tall and covered in hair legend says that if he runs that he runs the creeks of rural he was first spotted in 1834 when people reported seeing a wild man. People still claim to spot the Boggy Creek monster today, and he has been the subject of five feature-length films including the 1972's The Legend of the Boggy Creek. Is it Louisiana? I wish! Tennessee? No. Georgia? In the South? You were close to when it was Louisiana. They're like neighbors. Florida? No, no. Uh, neighbors. It's a big state. Is it? Yeah. Is it Kentucky? It's not Kentucky? No. I wish. Is it Texas? Which one is it? Arkansas. Arkansas? That's not a big state. Are you insane? Arkansas is big. It's got a lot of mountains. As a person from California, how could you say Arkansas is big? You've been yeah. in Arizona too long. <laughs> yes, it's I fried am. your brain. So this one is called the Charman. Charman. Ah, it already gives you a hint there. Charman. So, the Charman's origin story is gruesome. A father and a son were both caught in a house fire and horribly burnt in 1948. After the fire, the son became so mentally unstable that he killed his father. When the police found the son, he was so unrecognizably burnt, they didn't realize he was alive, so he ran away before they were able to arrest him for the murder of his father. The story goes that oh. ever since then, the Charman can be spotted wandering the woods surrounding... Oh, hi. Occasionally approaching tents of innocent campers or pretending to be a hitchhiker and then attempting to attack them. California? Yeah. The oh, hi gave it away, huh? Oh, hi gave it away, yeah. <laughs> but also, there's no way a person so burned 
that they were unrecognizable as a human could not be in shock and not die. I mean, he could have been, like, in shock, but, like, his body could have flooded him with, like, a lot of freaking adrenaline just to give him that push to move. Yeah, but he wouldn't have survived because when you are that burned, you your suffocate. entire dermis is destroyed and you can either, yeah, suffocate from lack of your uh, skin being oxygen permeable or um, you get an infection and die. That, that is true. Plus, your body goes into shock, and so it lowers your core temperature, which then starts to atrophy all of your organs because your body is trying to protect your heart. It will also send you into uh, hyperthermia. Yeah, and you're going to get hypotensive reactions eventually. If you do live that long, you're going to lose all mobility, cognitive function declines, and then you would essentially just die from lack of ability to survive. So, um, I was a f bit of a fun thing to do. Um, I want to change the subject here for a second. Oh, the just... subject you picked. Check it out. It was on the wrong one. Can you see my screen now? Hold on, let me click watch stream. <laughs> I can see your screen now. It's a, I'm having a bit of an inception moment. Yeah, they're all like stuck. So I was on the opposite screen. I forget I have two screens after a while. Sorry, my cat is moving my computer. So, um. Stuck, so. <laughs> Here is a fun thing I like to do, and that is go on here and go to the, uh, what was his name? Uh, there's a program you can use where it will generate sentences for you. Can't remember his name. Uh, what was it? It was AI. Sentence. Generator. Oh. Are you hearing me okay? Or? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Infer kit. It is called infer kit. Okay. So, uh, first off, I need to get it to where my viewers can see, where, where the viewers can see us rather than just this. So, I need to go to here. Here's my. Sometimes I'm going, okay. And then, bam, done. All right, so now that that's taken care of, I'm gonna go ahead and put you over here. So, uh, just type random words, uh, like, um, yo mama. You always got to start with that one. And then, Yo, Mama Mia, Dancing Queen, Gimme, Gimme, A Man After Midnight Candy, oh, another one bites the dust, the entertainer, get down to it. What? I can't help falling in love with you, Mama Mia. <laughs> so, Markiplier showed us this. On, on one of his videos, and I could not stop laughing about the potential this thing has. Okay. What are we doing? So, uh, give me two words, and we'll see where it goes with this. Two words. Mm-hmm. I'm 
sorry, my cat is going crazy. Um, cat, that would be a good one. Okay. Tuxedo. Tuxedo? Hmm. Cat tuxedo, this would be great. Why not? Cat, cat tuxedo dress, how in the hell had she gotten that? Here you go, Kyle pushed a paper cup filled with steaming liquid into her hand. That was all I could find on short notice, but I, but it should keep you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that is <laughs> so great. And then, um... Let's see, uh, or open up on a new tab, random word generator on your side, and have it okay. be two words and see what we come up with from that. Give me a second. March danger. Okay, so March danger. Oops. Generate text. March dangerously dear March, I want to encourage you to continue to educate yourselves about the signs and symptoms of diabetes, the disease process, and what you can do to avoid developing it. Oh my gosh, that's clever. I was not expecting it to go back on another word. That's cool. Give us two more words, please. Okay. Chart fishermen. Chart fisherman. All right. Chart fishermen on the beach forest to depart under fire. Sanki village is the latest community to be demolished under a municipal campaign to demolish, to dismantle what the city authority says are unsafe dwellings following. Mm. So this AI just pulls stuff from the internet and puts it in there. You would think, but you get different results with the same thing. Watch. <laughs> 